سعد الدين الحريري رئيسا لمجلس الوزراء You're watching the English newscast here on Future Television. I'm Linda Tamima. These are today's headlines. Revelers across the eastern part of the world are welcoming the new year, some with a spectacular fireworks display. Prime Minister Saad Hariri says oil sector decrease will be on the cabinet's agenda when it meets next Wednesday and promises to boost Lebanon's economy. And at least 27 people are killed and 57 others are wounded in Iraq as two bombs explode in the center of Baghdad. Thousands of revelers have gathered at first light along Sydney's harbor foreshore in advance of the city's New Year's Eve fireworks. The most sought-after vistas from peninsulas around Sydney's iconic opera house are now ticketed. And hundreds slept out in queues overnight to get the best spots when gates opened this morning. In other areas around the harbour, people started setting up tents on Friday before dawn. New Zealanders also celebrated 2017 with a fireworks display that erupted from Auckland Sky Tower. 500 kilograms of fireworks were used in the display, which took five months of planning. Take a look. Minister Saad Hariri says oil sector decrease will be on the cabinet's agenda when it meets next Wednesday, adding that he and President Michel Aoun are in agreement on major economic matters. Addressing an expanded delegation of the country's private sector, economic committees and bankers, Hariri stressed that Aoun's upcoming visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia will herald a boom for Lebanon's tourism industry. He also vowed to follow through on his promises to eradicate corruption from the state's administrative services. Coming up next, European capitals are tightening security ahead of New Year's celebrations. Stay tuned. Welcome back. At least 27 people were killed and 57 others were wounded as two bombs exploded in the center of Baghdad. Police said the blast triggered by two suicide bombers went off near car spare parts shops in Ain Sinak, in, in Al Sinak during the morning rush. The first blast reportedly took place at the market's entrance and the second was inside the area. Daesh claimed responsibility for the attack in a statement posted on its Amak website. Twin blasts ripping through a busy Baghdad market on Saturday. At least 25 dead and dozens more wounded in the Iraqi capital. Islamic State claiming the attacks which hit during the morning rush. Officials say one of the explosions was triggered by a suicide bomber, the other a roadside bomb. A pro-IS news agency says the assailants targeted Shiite Muslims, whom they regard as apostates. Islamic State has continued to launch attacks in the heavily fortified capital, even after losing most of the northern and western territory that seized in 2014. The jihadist group is under heavy pressure further north in Mosul, as government forces try to drive them out of their last major stronghold in the country. Republican U.S. Senator John McCain says Russia must be made to pay the price for cyber attacks on the United States and that it was possible to impose many sanctions, including on financial institutions. McCain, chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, has scheduled a hearing for Thursday on foreign cyber threats. 
I think it's a, a nice appropriate thing to do, but I don't think it's appropriate for the dimensions and the severity of the attack on the United States. A lot more needs to be done. And by the way, I saw where President Putin is not going to retaliate. I think that was a very clever move on his part, but should not change our attitude concerning attacks on the United States of America. Yes. There are many sanctions we could take, financial institutions for one. They, they, believe it or not, the Russians have a very weak economy. We could uh, do a lot more damage there. Individuals could be sanctioned. Organizations should, could be sanctioned. There's a wide range of options that we still have of additional options that could be exercised to respond to a Russian attack. When you attack a country, it's an act of war. And so we have to make sure that there is a price to pay so that we can perhaps persuade the Russians to stop this kind of attacks on our very fundamentals of democracy. President-elect can veto, the president-elect can take his measures that he wants to. I hope that we can all work together. But that no Congress of the United States is going to sacrifice the freedom and independence of Ukraine. There's too much support. There is too strong a base, including very active Ukrainian Americans. So we are equal branches of government. And I do not want to have a fight with the president-elect. That's not my job, but there is sufficient votes overwhelmingly to support the freedom and independence of Ukraine and help them uh, keep that independence and freedom through assistance, military cooperation, and many other means. European capitals are tightening security ahead of New Year's celebrations after an Islamic State attack in Berlin last week killed 12 people. Nathan Frandino reports. Barricades are going up in Berlin ahead of New Year's, just a week after the city suffered a deadly attack by Islamic State. Officials have already closed Pariser Platz Square near the Brandenburg Gate, where an extra 1,700 police officers will be on patrol. Organizers say they're confident they'll ring in 2017 safely. The security concept is very comprehensive, and if you visit, you will probably be in one of the safest places in Germany tomorrow night. The attack last week left 12 people dead and prompted greater calls for stepping up security. Brussels is also following suit. The city suffered from attacks in March when Islamist suicide bombers killed 16 people. Now, city officials and New Year's organizers are not taking any chances. Obviously, the police will be there in numbers, and as in other European capitals, we will work with a system of blocks. When one block is full, it will be closed to avoid having too many people in the same place. Officials had debated canceling New Year fireworks in Brussels, but decided they would go ahead. Greece's ambassador to Brazil was murdered in a plot hatched by his Brazilian wife and her police officer lover who confessed to the crime. The envoy Kyriakos Amiridis was killed on Monday by the officer Sergio Gomez Moreira. Amiridis' charged, charred body was found on Thursday in Rio in his burned out rental car a day after his Brazilian wife Françoise de Souza Oliveira declared him missing. Oliveira and Moreira are in custody after they both admitted to having an affair. Oliveira denied participating in the murder itself but confessed she knew of the crime. Outgoing U.S. President Barack Obama has wished a Happy New Year to Americans and praised what he said were the many accomplishments of his presidency. In his weekly address, Obama urged Americans to stay united in the aftermath of the 2016 presidential elections, in his words. Happy New Year, everybody. At a time when we turn the page on one year and look ahead to the future, I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for everything you've done to make America stronger these past eight years. Just eight years ago, as I prepared to take office, our economy teetered on the brink of depression. Nearly 800,000 Americans were losing their jobs each month. In some communities, nearly one in five folks were out of work. 
Almost 180,000 troops were serving in Iraq and Afghanistan, and Osama bin Laden was still at large. And on challenges from health care to climate change, we've been kicking the can down the road for way too long. Eight years later, you've told a different story. We turned recession into recovery. Our businesses have created 15.6 million new jobs since early 2010. And we've put more people back to work than all other major advanced economies combined. A resurgent auto industry has added nearly 700,000 jobs and is producing more cars than ever. Poverty is falling. Incomes are rising. In fact, last year, folks' typical household income rose by $2,800. That's the single biggest increase on record. And folks at the bottom and middle saw bigger gains than those at the top. 20 million more Americans know the financial security of health insurance. Our kids' high school graduation rate is at an all-time high. We've brought 165,000 troops from Iraq and Afghanistan and took out Osama bin Laden. Through diplomacy, we shut down Iran's nuclear weapons program, opened up a new chapter with the people of Cuba, and brought nearly 200 nations together around a climate agreement that could save this planet for our kids. Almost every country on Earth sees America as stronger and more respected today than they did eight years ago. And marriage equality is finally a reality from coast to coast. We have made extraordinary progress as a country these past eight years. And here's the thing. None of it was inevitable. It was the result of tough choices we made and the result of your hard work and resilience. And to keep America moving forward is a task that falls to all of us. Sustaining and building on all we've achieved, from helping more young people afford a higher education, to ending discrimination based on pre-existing conditions, to tightening rules on Wall Street, to protecting this planet for our kids, that's going to take all of us working together. Because that's always been our story. The story of ordinary people coming together in the hard, slow, sometimes frustrating, but always vital work of self-government. It has been the privilege of my life to serve as your president. And as I prepare to take on the even more important role of citizen, know that I will be there with you every step of the way to ensure that this country forever strives to live up to the incredible promise of our founding, that all of us are created equal, and all of us deserve every chance to live out our dreams. From the Obama family to yours, have a happy and blessed 2017. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Revelers across the eastern part of the world are welcoming the new year, some with a spectacular fireworks display. Prime Minister Saad Hariri says oil sector decrees will be on the cabinet's agenda when it meets next Wednesday and promises to boost Lebanon's economy. And at least 27 people are killed and 57 others are wounded in Iraq as two bombs explode in the center of the capital, Baghdad. Those are your headlines for this last day of the year. I'm Linda Tamim and on behalf of our team, I wish everybody watching a happy new year. Enjoy the celebrations and be safe.